So how to build a feedback culture that fosters happiness and motivation? Why do we even talk about this? So what is the problem that we're trying to solve? This is a question that Angel just asked us in the other room in the morning. And this is something we also thought about when we, like, with our work in general. From a company's perspective, there's two sides. We see, on the one hand, the needs of a company making money, pretty much. The market is moving fast. There's competitors showing up every day. There is the question of how do we keep our existing customers and how do we attract new customers, right? That's a question that companies have. On the other hand, it's the question of talent. Where do we get the people from, the motivated ones, the ones with the knowledge? How do we keep them? Like we have this huge churn rate all over the place. And then we're facing the millennial generation Y, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it the generation dreamer, the people who want to contribute to something that is bigger than themselves, having the purpose. So this is why this topic is relevant to business. And for companies, the answer to how do we survive on the market is usually innovations. So we keep talking about innovations, how to get them to make money, how to get the USP. And yet, looking at the company structures, it's basically 15% that is actually engaging with, the, with this question, um, what is innovations, how do we get them, what are the business cases that help us surviving on the market, that raises the question, what about the remaining 85%? What about the people who work in customer care? What about the software development um, groups of people? What about, what about the customers out there? What about all the different roles that you have in the company besides strategy and innovation, maybe, if you, ha if you happen to have that? We claiming building a feedback culture. We saying build a feedback culture a feedback culture fosters happiness and innovation. Happy people create products, customers love. Once a customer loves a product, you make money. And we're talking a lot about what means which term. And this is why we want to bring in a definition just for the peace of our minds, right? So as we've been talking about what is agile, what is lean, what is all that, we want to bring in this um, definitions to make it easier for us to follow. Happiness is a sense of fulfillment, peace of mind, calmness. Happiness is not a constant feeling of pleasure till exhaustion. So it's not jumping up and down, being happy the whole day and laughing and making fun, no. It's when you feel calm. The other word that we've been using, so it was happiness, and then we introduced the term motivation. So what's motivation? We run with the desire and willingness to do something. Reasons for acting or behaving in a particular way. Last concept, feedback. Transparency, trust, meaningful conversation. This is what feedback is based on. And to us, it's a conversation about the things that matter, that help to do better and to understand. We're bringing in a do-it-yourself guide to create your own feedback culture to solve these problems that I've mentioned in the beginning. And our do-it-yourself guide consists out of three parts. Listen and understand, engage in the conversation, and third, act on the insights. Thanks a lot, Sabrina. So, um, I'm here today to bring you some uh, real-life real life examples from clients of us regarding how difficult or the challenge that you may find in building this uh, kind of feedback culture. So. Um, first of all, let me introduce how do we gather feedback from, from the organizations so you can understand how it goes and, and how it works. Um, um, obviously, as when, when, when we started in our company, a small team, 
we had all this every day, you know, con direct contact with people that keep us informed, that, that was very easy to know what was going on with the rest of the people. And as Angel said in his talk, uh, we were using this kind of alien technology, which was go there and talk to the people. And that works for a mm, small team, 10, 15, 20 people maybe. But what happens when your company starts growing and you, you keep eyeing people and then you have 50, 100, 300 thousands of people there. You start losing, as an executive, as a di director, you, you start losing that direct contact with people. So what we did is we create a product that can scale this one-to-one -one communication in a large organization. At the end, we are using mobile technology and mobile app just to capture not only people's feedback, but also their feelings. So we tell them, OK, we really care about how you are feeling today. And then we ask them to provide some comments on a daily basis. Why are you feeling awesome today? Is there some teammate that you want to, to say thank you or to praise? Mm, using this feedback, of course, then you can apply all the AI and natural langu language processing techniques in order to put all that feedback together and bring some insights and make it very easy to hold this conversation with thousands of people. The two main characteristics of the platform is that, first of all, it is completely anonymous. So that brings that honesty that you need when, it, when we talk about feedback. And the second part is that it is transparent. So everything that you share, it is anonymously, is, is anonymously uh, put into a timeline, similar to a Twitter timeline, where all your teammates and the rest of the company can see that, no matter if you are the clerk or the president. So, these are some of the clients that we were working with, uh, many different industries, many different types of, of clients. Um, and I'm going to bring you real life situations. So, you're probably going you're, you're gonna to probably say um, that these situations will, will never happen to you. But I promise you that when you are, are the one who is receiving the feedback, you will, you will, remind, you will remember this point. So, the first one, understand. Um, one of the things that we notice is that we haven't been trained to receive feedback. I don't know you, but I attend school, high school, university, and masters. And I learn a lot about physics, mathematics, history, uh, engineering, finance, operations, but I don't have any sing single subject about how to receive feedback, process that feedback, you know, how to answer back how to establish that connection with others, how to understand your, your emotions and others' emotions. So receiving feedback is very tough. Um, we have this um, thing that we have to fight with. We call cognitive distortion. So this is the first thing that happens when you start receiving feedback, which is, this is how you, you see the smiley face in Happy Force as a user. So how do you feel today? Okay, but the way you receive that feedback is like this. And this is called cognitive distortion. Uh, I have this company, 700 people, okay, a, re a retail store. And the CEO and the HR directors, they mm, phone me and they say, Alex, we are very, very worried about the happy force feedback that we are getting because everything is bad. I mean, this is generating a lot of, like a bad atmosphere, you know, like people is complaining all the time, and they are being very tough, and we don't like that because we, we, we believe this is not helping, you know, to, to create this culture that we want. So what I, I was puzzled. So what I did is, okay, I stopped my, my, my work, and I downloaded the whole database of comments, and I read like more than 700 comments for the last couple of months or, or month. And reading one, one by one, all of them, and classifying them, okay, classifying them. And I found out that almost 60 to 70% of the comments, let's say like 400, there were nice, nice comments. There were people uh, saying thank you to each other, praising each other, um, people cheering each other, people saying that they love to work there. And that was like 400 out of 700 comments. And then we have um, a bunch of comments that were, let's say, subject, su suggestions in the sense that critics, but positive and constructive critics. 
you have um, a bunch of comments that were talking about, okay, I'm happy because it's Friday or my football team won. And then you have like um, 100 comments that were criticisms. Some of them were talking about the uniforms, you know, like physical things, the, the safety boots, things like that. And others were talking about more internal motivators. But the, the thing is that I found like four to five comments that were really tough. Okay, that you, when you was reading it, you, say, okay, you, you can say, okay, this guy stepped over the line. But that was for four comments out of 700. But the perception of these guys was, okay, this is terrible. This is, the only thing that they were, they were seeing was the bad comments. Easy, huh? Sorry, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move on. Okay, next thing. Then, as you see, we need to learn how to listen and how to process that information, and how to fight with our cognitive distortion that makes things, you know, look in a different way uh, than they are. What we are doing is we are bringing data to back up that decisions that you make. The second thing is, okay, now that you have received data, you have to answer back, you have to engage, you have to talk back to these people. And that's a challenge also. That's a challenge. I give you this example, okay? And how to answer and not run away from feedback. This is very important. Hold on, Andrea, can you take a photo, please? <laughs> <laughs> we have to use the, the, the giddy... Uh, Hashtag the, the rocket, rocket kitty, kitty challenge. <laughs> so don't do like this, cut, and run away from feedback. But imagine that you are... Um, the mm, real example. Logistics director of a retail store. You have like 400 people working for you. And then... In Happy Force, you see this message that reads something like, and I'm translating from Spanish, something like, okay, I agree that my boss, the director of logistics, is pushing harder with these quarterly goals. Okay, that's fine. But, first of all, I've never seen him one single day in the warehouse. And secondly, he is all the day in the cafeteria doing nothing. Okay, that was the message. Tough. But when you see that that message is supported, that had like 70 people agreeing with that, because you, that's public, and you see, okay, I agree with that. I don't know what this guy is doing in the cafeteria. So 70 people agreeing with that message. You know what was the reaction of this manager? He called us, and he said, Alex, we want you to take that message out. Delete it. And I said, what? what? Why? What's that? And he said, because it's a lie. How oh, is a lie? Yeah, because that's not true. Okay, maybe that's different that to be a lie. That's not true, you know? And he was very, very, very upset. He was even saying, this is something very serious because it is saying that I'm not, you know, attending my job. So I can be even, you know, uh, fired for doing that. I said, okay, 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 hold on. Why don't you breathe and relax and try to understand what they are trying to tell you? First of all, first of all, why are, why are you not going to the warehouse? And he said, okay, you know, from the last uh, yearly survey that we did before having Happy Force, uh, I got this information that I was micromanaging my people. So the decision was, okay, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna go to, and talk to you never ever again. So he just stopped going to the warehouse. And then what about the cafeteria thing? What are you doing all the day in the cafeteria? And he said, well, Indeed, I'm all the day in the cafeteria, okay. Um, because you know, when, when, when we took off this uh, new um, floor plan and the, uh, we, we took down the offices and now we have this open space, which is really nice, but 80% of my time, I'm working, I'm talking with uh, providers, uh, middle managers, so I'm having meetings and I don't have a meeting room now. I don't have my own space. So I took that corner in the cafeteria and now I'm, I'm meeting there with people all the day. And my point was, and why don't you just tell them that? How difficult it is to open a message and say, okay, guys, first of all, thanks a lot for your feedback. That's the first tip. Thanks a lot for your feedback. Regarding the warehouse thing, okay, I thought I was, you know, uh, micromanaging you. So now that you know mm, that you want me to be in the trenches more with you, I'm going to do that. That's a promise. And second hand, um, if you see me at the cafeteria, it's because I don't have an office. 
and I'm working there, if you pass by and, and you see me alone, if you come to say hello, I'm going to buy you a coffee and we can t uh, have a duck or chat a little bit. So, as you see, this is not difficult at all. Well, it, it doesn't cost you money, it doesn't, it doesn't cost you time. Maybe you need a lot of energy to do that and process that. And this thing happened to this manager and probably happens to all of you when you are receiving feedback that you don't like, because we tend to protect and say, and reject that and say, I don't like that. And this is the third story that we have. Um, this is something I, I, someone, this is amazing. So when I talk to clients, uh, most of the time they say, um, you know, we think that this open feedback culture is great and your, your platform, the tool, happy force thing, everything. But, you know, our people, they are not ready for this. I mean, we are working in building a new culture and they are not ready for this. So we will wait, you know, till we have changed the whole culture and then we can open that to the feedback. And that's a fallacy. I mean, I told him, look, guys, the people are ready. We have this working in factories, in software development uh, companies, in retail stores, in everywhere. And in different countries, it is working like charm. I mean, people, they want to use that. They really want to contribute. They, they really want to make things better. They really want to have a voice, no matter what. But on the other side, what about you, the managers? You are the ones who maybe are not ready for this. And I can buy, and I can buy that. And this takes me to the third story, which is I have this client in my retail, um, retail uh, store, international. 6,000 employees, 6,000 employees. Amazing, because I, um, they deployed Happy Force. They had it for um, four, thing, four or five months. And we were doing this meeting with the steering committee. You imagine this large table, you know, like the board of directors with a lot, lot of people there, like 15 executives there. And we were reviewing the last five months of Happy Force feedback. And there were, there were a lot of feedback around how to improve products, how, how to improve um, the connection with the, with the clients, a lot of feedback. And they say, okay, uh, we are puzzled about the, the amount of information, but Alex, we don't like most of the, the tone of voice the, the employees that are using to, to write these messages. And we think that sometimes it is disrespectful. Or, or not disrespectful, but they, they ask me, can you do something like train them you know, to be like more positive, more assertive, more to communicate in a non-violent way. And, and I was like listening to them, to, 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 to their proposal. And I was like, nodding like, like this, like saying, okay, so you want me to teach, to train 6,000 teenager employees, because most of these employees were, were uh, 20 or 18 years old or girls working in stores, you know, selling up uh, clothes. Um, so you want me to teach them, 6,000 employees, how to communicate like angels. Rather, why don't you, guys, there are 15 guys here that you are making a lot of money <laughs> every year. Why don't you learn how to listen? So you cannot say that you don't want to receive the feedback because you don't like, you know, the package. So this is the third story. Now we move on. Ah, okay. I'm sorry, I have to Instagram in between. I'm, ah, I'm addicted. Okay. <laughs> this was the, the last one. So okay. before you leave, you also got to... No, that's not working. But before you leave, I have something to do for you. So now... You want the clicker? Yes. Okay. So now, your company, right? So imagine you get all this beautiful feedback. You get all these insights. You understand. You kind of know. You're like, all right, I get it. Hygiene factors, so... We need better computers, we need better desktops, um, we need all sorts of things on the one hand. And then on the other hand, as a company, you feel really overwhelmed with that. You get all this insight, you are obviously open to receive it since you opened up that channel in some way. What do you do next? We have in companies many processes and tools. We have so much of it. And many of it is just super boring or super hard to understand. And what I've been doing in, in my profession, I've been designing everything based on making people happy, in a sense, motivating them, 
having fun, playing around, but not in a sense of, oh, just let's, you know, just let's have a ball on company cost. Yay, no, not like that. But in a way, think back, like the problem, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? The problem we're trying to solve is the company needs to survive. The, a company is there to make money, to generate money, and we want also to make some money working in the company, thinking of salary. So how can we connect those two things? I'm bringing in here because it's a job by example, as Alex kept telling me while the preparation, he's like, it's a job by example, we need examples. So I'm bringing in an example from a company that had, has had all this um, feedback, and now he broke the internet. That's it, <laughs> the internet is gone. <laughs> so we, as a company, we have had all these insights of people, what they're happy about and not. We knew what works, what doesn't work, and then the company was at the moment like, all right, let's do a hackathon. Software developers like hackathons. It's candy for them. Let's motivate them. Let's give them the carrot. And we don't really care about the output. We don't really believe that this might be actually something that helps us moving forward as a company, but we do it. So what me and my colleague did back then is we used this opportunity to design for success and design for meeting the needs of the people around. So that's a brief video that gives you an impression of it. Now, hit it. ziemlich cool war, ist, dass man bei den ersten Inno Days letztes Jahr hatte man so eine unglaubliche Energie, die einfach aus nichts aufgepumpt so ist. Und das war krass, das war halt nochmal gestiegen. Also man hat nochmal gemerkt, die Leute haben so ein Umfeld total drauf gefreut und wollten halt... Aber es war auch also über das Netzwerk aufbauen, mit den Menschen zu sprechen, mit ihnen zu sprechen, mit ihnen zu sprechen, mit ihnen zu sprechen und haben Lust daran, echt teilzunehmen. Ähm, und ich glaube, letztes Jahr war es noch so ein bisschen ähm, so ein bisschen Konkurrenzkampf in den Teams. Ich meine, das war es dieses Jahr auch, aber man hat halt irgendwie gemerkt, die supporten sich total. Das ist total der Spirit der InnoDays. So what you've seen is we've provided, we provided our colleagues a stage to outperform, to leave their role description and to contribute to the company. Because this is what all of us want. We want to contribute in a meaningful way. We want to see the organization that we're involved in being successful. And we designed this hackathon based on connecting people based on enabling feedback and sharing to actually contribute something not only meaningful as in um, for the moment, but also to start a conversation that can last for a longer time. So we are stating, build a feedback culture. This feedback culture fosters happiness and innovation 
because happy people create products customers love. We do not want to just do stuff to make people happy in that moment, to have them flipping out and being like all excited. And we will have Melissa Lang speaking just right after us about this, about how can you actually build a team without paintball, without placebo effects, without candy, because it's not where we want to put our money. So we want to say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And before you leave, let's do this. Let's do boomerang. Can we do it? Like those who leave, you just stay here for a second. You don't go. And the rest, like, please stay because it's Mel uh, next up. Yeah. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for your time. Hi there. I have a question about uh, feedback that's anonymous and the relation to anonymous feedback towards the transparency that you mentioned. So I have a feeling that there's not true transparency as long as you are ashamed of writing underneath your feedback your name. So what do you think about it? What's your feeling? Yeah, we, we, we had a lot of discussions about this, this topic inside and we, we even tried not, not anonymous feedback, but it's very difficult to get a honest feedback in that, in that case. Uh, the thing is that, what, for instance, what we've seen is in the companies that they have a very advanced culture, what they do is, using this anonymity the, the, the following way, when they are sharing tough comments, they put their names on. And when they are saying thank you, embracing each other, things like that, they use anonymity. So at the end, you, what we are doing is empowering the employees so they can choose how to use that anonymity. And that usage also signals you what kind of culture do you have. I agree that in a, the ideal world, you won't need that anonymity because well, Angel always says, says, tells this story about the managers, you know, that no matter how kind you are as a manager, you wear like two invisible guns here that you cannot see them, but your teams, uh, they can. And you say, okay, you can come to me and talk like a friend, but you can do like that, boom, you're fired. So this anonymity helps to delete that uh, sentiment. Thanks a lot for your question. Thank you. We have one more question. Uh, <clears throat> I just would like to ask uh, why you have used four levels level scale uh, in this application, not five, if, when you've got one neutral and one po two positive, two negative. You, you, you know what? Because when we, we tried with five, and most of the people were, were like saying, okay, from one to five, three, like, ah, I'm fine. So that way, that way, I make you to think either you are, you know, Mm, waiting to the happy side or to the sad side, but you have to take a position. So that helps to unbias the, the results. But That's you've got two positive, one neutral and one negative, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have that. So you have to okay. choose your, your side. Thanks right, a lot once for again, the question. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Once again, thank you very much.